Hello all and welcome to this hands-on lab. In our lab today, we will use VS Code, Python and Amazon Q Developer to learn how to explain and update code. Prerequisites for this lab is knowledge of Amazon Q Developer. Hence, if you do not know what this service is all about, please refer to this overview tutorial that I had created some time back. URL to the tutorial is mentioned right here at the bottom. I will also have it posted in the description of this video. You also need to install Amazon Q Developer extension or plugin for your IDE. In my case, I have already performed this installation for my IDE, which is VS Code. This is the link or the URL that has the steps uh, that can help you with this installation. It's a pretty straightforward installation. It just takes a few minutes and you should be done. In fact, I have this URL open as well. And if you see, you have, uh, you know, installations for VS Code, JetBrains, IDE and the um, AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. So depending upon whatever IDE you are using, please go ahead and install the Amazon Q developer extension or plugin. Reference URLs. So this URL that I mentioned over here that has additional information on this particular topic, I would recommend that you visit this URL. I will have this URL posted in the description of this video. Below that, we have uh, the Amazon Q playlist on my channel. So I'm creating a bunch of videos on Amazon Q. Right now, I'm working on Amazon Q Developer. This is the URL to that playlist. You can you know, bookmark this particular URL. So whenever a new video is added, in that case, you will be notified. Both these links will be posted in the description of this video. Scenario for our lab today. We will ask Amazon Q Developer to generate code for a calculator in Python. Once this code is generated, we will use these commands with Amazon Q Developer. So that basically talks about explaining the code, refactoring the code, fixing the code, optimizing the code, and sending the code to the prompt. Okay, so let's get started. Step one. So the first step is to create a calculator. So in my case, I'm going to launch VS Code. Then we are going to ask Q if Q can generate code to, X, to add, subtract, multiply, and divide two numbers provided by the user. Now, this action might take a few minutes. I've taken a very simple example so that Q does not take a lot of time to generate the code. Okay, but in general, if, if your example is not simple as, as simple as this, then please be patient because Q does take some time to generate the code. Once the code is generated, we will review Q's response. We'll create a file name, mycal.py. You can, you know, use any name that you like. We will click on insert at cursor in Amazon Q. Code should be picked, copied over. And finally, we will run the script using the Python command. So let's get started. Where is my VS code? So this is my VS code right here. And uh, in fact, okay, it's already clear. If you want to clear uh, Amazon Q developer, uh, you can actually type slash clear and it will clear all the previous history. Okay, so you see, in my case, it was already cleared, but in your case, if it's not clear, this is how you can clear the history or if there's anything else. Now we are going to give it the command. So can you generate code to add, subtract, divide, and multiply two numbers provided by the user? So this is our ask to Amazon Q developer. Let's see what it does. So I'm going to hit on send. So the response is certainly, it will be happy to help you cre uh, to create a simple calculator program. 
okay and this is the code right here right and it is giving you an option to insert add cursor or even copy the code and then it is explaining us what this particular code does so like you know we have defined for functions as a main program user is prompted if the user chooses to exit option number five terminates the program and all the other details are mentioned right here okay so this is how the program works fine now instead of writing generate code you can let's see let us try something else okay so i'm going to uh, clear this there's another thing that you can try is um okay where is okay can you create a file that has code to say a file or should i write create a project that has code to add subtract multiply and divide two numbers provided by the user let's see what it does it's a similar ask but instead of just generating the code i'm basically telling it to create a project okay so this is the whole code right here again so if you can see the style is the same okay it's generated a similar code and then it is giving us an explanation oh there it is so it did not actually create a project okay but it is basically just giving you the explanation okay i was hoping that it will basically at least give me steps that okay go ahead and do this or create a new file or something like that but it did not okay so let's do one thing let's create a new file we'll create a python file so python file okay and there are two ways to have this code copied over over here so one thing is you do is you know click on copy and you will see that the code is copied to clipboard you'll have to come here hit paste the other thing that you can do is click on insert at cursor my cursor is over here at line number one so i'm going to click on insert at cursor and the code is copied over right here right so there you go we will save and then i'm going to say mycal.py and save this particular file so we have finished all these steps in fact we have even copied it so now we need to compile the code so let's go here let's go to our terminal and let me reduce this and reduce this now if you already have something on your terminal the command to clear is just clear and it will clear the terminal for you okay so let's compile this piece of code now this is my path on my local machine where this particular file has been created so i'm going to basically just go and say python mycal.py and there it is so i'm going to say okay uh what multiply two numbers this is number one and this is second number and this is the result and till the time i don't uh, you know uh, type in five let's say for what happens if i type in nine let's see okay invalid input so it will want me to type five in order to exit this particular um program now five key doesn't work on my laptop so i'll have to use a virtual keyboard and hit enter again clear the screen and one of the quick things that i am going to do is change this from five to nine and you know enter your choice okay and let's see where is five over here if the choice is nine then it is this okay so i'm going to save this and let me try this again okay there you go 
So I've made the required changes. So we have basically completed step one. Step two is to explain the code. Now, typically when you uh, tell Amazon Q, explain the code to me, it will basically generate an explanation for the code in simple English. So what we are going to do is, we are going to select the code, right click on it, select Amazon Q, and then click on explain. So let me go over here. Now, there it is. Again, let's clear Q. Now select any piece of code. Let's say we select this piece of code. This is the multiply function. So we have selected the code. Right click, Amazon Q, explain. The moment I click on explain, the code will be copied over and it will generate an explanation for this piece of code in simple English. Now, the reason why I'm showing these commands to you is for this particular lab, this function is very simple. But in real life, you may have some complex functions that you might want to, you know, get a better understanding of as to what this piece of code is doing for me. So do explore this particular command and see how it works. In most cases, what I've seen, it does a good job. It generates an explanation for the code and what the code does. So let's see what explanation Q has generated for us. So it is basically uh, telling us selected block of code defines a function called as multiply in Python. And let's break it down. The command that we gave Q is explain the following part of my code. And it's basically telling us what this particular function does. Okay. Like what is the def keyword, the function name, it takes two parameters, it returns this. And finally, this is a final return value. And it does a simple multiplication. And what would uh, it would be uh, if you ask the function what is what's five times three, it would respond with 15. So it's just doing some basic multiplication over here. So it's basically in very simple words, explaining us what this piece of code does. So that is the explain command. So we are done with step two. Now let's go and look at the refactor command. Again, simple, select the piece of code, right click, Amazon Q, refactor. Now what does refactor do? Refactor basically improves the code's readability or efficiency. And we will review the refactored code. Again, if the code makes sense, then we will click on insert at cursor. One thing to keep in mind when you click on insert at cursor, Amazon Q will blindly insert the code wherever your cursor is. Hence, be careful when you click on insert at cursor. Ensure that your cursor is at a decent position and the code is inserted correctly. You need to comment the old code and ensure that the new code is indented properly. And finally, we will compile the code using the Python command. So let's go back over here. Let me clear Q. Now let's see, we will say, let's look, take the divide function. So I'm highlighting the divide function. Right click, Amazon Q, and let's click on refactor. Now, the, the command that Q got is refactor the following part of my code. Now, let's see what it has generated. So, it's basically going to certainly refactor the code to improve its readability, maintainability, and robustness. So, remember, this is what refactor does. Okay. So, when you're telling Amazon Q to refactor the code, this is what it is doing behind the scene. It's trying to make it more readable and make it more robust and this is the refactored version so basically it has defined you know it's the same function divide but it has given a dividend and a divisor both of them are flows is returning a float it's performing a division of two numbers it is returning a float and it basically see remember it's going to make it robust so it has basically now added value, um, any divide, division by zero error over here. So if you see if divisor is equal to zero, 
then basically raise an error saying division by zero is not allowed. So certainly it has made this particular code a little more robust. Okay, but if you see, the original code also has divide by zero. So this code is, is pretty decent. The only thing that it has done over here is that it has basically typed these inputs and even the output. Now, some of you might debate with me, like, is it really robust, etc. I mean, if it's a typed uh, input output, yes, it's a little robust. But otherwise, I mean, this piece of code that you have right now will certainly work as well. But in your, when you're working in your, you know, your live production environment or with your own code, do use this particular command to see how far readable has it made. Now, certainly it has made it readable. Okay, by giving it, you know, these floors, etc. It's also written some uh, comments over here. So certainly it has improved its readability and maintainability as well. If I have to maintain this code, or if somebody else has to maintain this piece of code, it will be very easy for this particular individual. So yes, the readability and maintainability has been improved. Robustness, I would say, apart from the typed, uh, you know, the, the type uh, input variables and the output over here, I think this code also is, is decent enough, okay? So now let us see if we can use this particular piece of code. So as I said, I mean, it kind of gets you like, you know, 40, 50, sometimes 60%. That's what I feel. But it does a decent job most times, right? I mean, I would not say that you blindly copy over the code, read through it, see if it makes sense and then copy it over. So right now what we are going to do is, one way is to click on insert at cursor and the other way is to click on copy. So I'm going to click on insert at cursor. So my cursor is over here. So be careful where your cursor is. Click on insert at cursor right here. So our code has been inserted and we should basically comment the old code. So I've commented the old code. Now let us see if this particular piece of code works. So let's say, again, I'm going to compile the code. There it is. And remember the function that we changed is divide. So the option is four. And we are going to say 90 divided by nine. And the result is 10. And now I'm going to click on 9 to exit out of this particular program. And I'm going to clear the screen. So yes, this particular piece of code does work. So this is refactoring. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to try and fix it. Now fix behind the scenes basically what it does, it tries to debug the code. And then it provides an explanation. So similarly again, you can, fin I mean, I'm going to use a divide uh, function. You can use anything that you like, whatever piece of code. You're going to select the code, right click, select Amazon Q fix. Again, review the suggestion. And then if it makes sense, we will insert that cursor and finally compile it. So let's go back over here. Let me clear Q. Okay, now let us use this piece of code that it has generated. So we have selected that particular piece of code, right click, cube, and we are going to click on fix. Okay, now let's see, now it's, it's trying to debug the code behind the scenes and then see if it can make any further optimizations. So selected code block appears to be well-structured Python function it already includes error handling for division by zero with type hints. However, there are a few minor optimization improvements we can make. And then use float type for division. Python 3 already performs float division by default, so we don't need to explicitly convert the result to float. Now, remember now it's telling you not, you, can, you don't need to convert the result explicitly to float. Okay, let's read further ahead. Use a more specific exception instead of uh, value error. We can use zero division error. 
okay which is more appropriate for this case and then finally optimize the zero check we can use math dot is close to handle potential floating point precision issues and this is the optimized version of the code and this is the entire uh, explanation so behind the scenes what fix does is it basically debugs the code and then tries to see what optimizations it can make now this is the new code so what it has done is it has imported math again we still have our uh, interface definition over here is using math dot it's close it is instead of value error it is using zero division error and then yeah a message has been sent out and finally the value has been returned okay so this time around what i'm going to do is i'm not going to click on insert at cursor i'm going to click on copy so if you see it is telling us that the selected code is copied to clipboard and then we are going to come here and right click and click on paste so code is copied over now as i said it's a dumb copy paste so i do not like my import statements over here i'm going to take this import go up paste it on the top and remember you have to comment the previous code okay so we've commented the previous code this is our new code okay it has good readability maintainability is robust is is further optimized okay by zero division error let us save this and then let's try to compile this piece of code so we have python my uh, mycal.py let's execute this so it's working remember we changed the division function so four choose any number okay so 292 divided by one is 292 and that's pretty much what it is again nine come out of this and we are good to go so i'm going to clear this okay so again i'm going to clear this as well so we have basically completed step four now let's go to step five and this is basically optimization now this optimization is enhancing the code's performance okay everything is same okay but this time what we are going to do is we are going to select the optimize option and then finally run the script so let's do that so i've cleared everything over here now let's again select the same piece of code remember this piece of code was generated by amazon q developer right click amazon q and we are going to say optimize optimize the following part of my code now let's see the provided code snippet for the divide function is already quite well optimized but there are a few minor improvements we can make to enhance its performance and readability so this is what the optimize option does or the optimize command does here's an optimized version of the code with explanation so it still has this it still has this okay let's see what it has optimized oh absolute divisor and then it is using some value over here and it still has zero division error what did we have earlier oh earlier we had math dot is closed so what it did is basically it replaced this particular line and now it is using absolute divisor and the some value over here some absolute total value or something like that okay so now let us see what is the explanation over here so it removes the so and so function and, and instead of using math dot is closed we can directly compare the absolute value of the divisor with a small threshold so some value as i said this eliminates the function call overhead and simplifies the code so it wanted to remove math dot is closed so that's what it is doing over here this change slightly improves performance by reducing the number of function calls and calculations so it's telling you why did it remove that to reduce the number of function calls and making this particular piece of code more performant 
okay now something like this in your real life in your in a life project can be super handy because it can help you to reduce the number of functional calls and optimize that piece of code now you have the import function that's all import statement that's already there type hinting is already there doc string error message these optimizations maintain the same functionality by slightly improving performance the main performance gain comes from replacing mac dot is closed with a direct comparison this change reduces the number of function calls and calculations which will be beneficial especially if this function is called frequently in a performance critical section of your code so if you are looking for performance gain in your code use this particular functionality okay here in most cases or in it's worth noting that in most cases the performance difference between the original and the optimized versions will be would be negligible the original code was already well written and efficient the optimization suggestions here are minor and will show a notable noticeable difference in extremely performance critical scenarios with high number of function calls so it's made certain assumptions that hey your your code was good but if you happen to call this function let's say in a loop or there are multiple you know uh, concurrent calls that you receive for this particular function in that case the uh, the uh, the change that i am suggesting that is this absolute divisor and comparing it to some small value as it was saying some small threshold value that will be far more performant than mat dot is close because this is a function call and you, basically what i am trying to do is i'm reducing this particular overhead now let us go ahead and insert this code at cursor right here now we already have import math on the top remember i told you it does a, a a dumb or a blind import okay so i'm going to you know comment this piece of code and then i'm going to remove this we already have this on the top and then we have this piece of code right here let's save this okay and now let us see if we can compile this piece of code so yes it works i'm going to say 4 because remember that's the function that we changed some number divide by and this is the result again like we can probably try you know maybe 3 9 into 8 72 that's the result right there and let me get out of this and clear okay so we have completed step 5 step 6 send to prompt now you can again select whatever piece of code you can you know basically select the code that subtracts two numbers again same select the code right click amazon queue send to prompt now over here when you send it to prompt the entire code will be copied over and then you will be prompted to ask a question about this particular piece of code and that question could be pretty much anything it could be as simple as explain this code to me what does it do what is this what language is this written in does it make sense you know something very very simple so let's try this so let's come here let me you know open this window slash clear now let's select some piece of code like subtract right click amazon queue send to prompt so as you see the code has got you know is got copied over over here now i'm going to say what is this okay what language is this code written in does it make sense now i am asking three questions in one go and let's see what q does with that so enter is generating my answer so it's basically telling me that this code is written in python it's a simple function definition that performs subtraction now let's break it down so it's giving me an explanation about what this function does for example if you were to use this function you know the output would be 7 so it's actually also giving me an example as to what this piece of code would do and what kind of 
you know, inputs I should be giving. This function is simple but perfectly valid Python code. It's common to create such utility functions in programming to perform basic operations which can be used throughout a larger program or as part of a more complex calculation. So it is telling me that it is a perfectly valid Python code. I'm, uh, I did ask, you know, does it make sense? So it's telling me this code does make sense. So it's answering all of my questions. So it's a pretty decent answer. I'm going to give it a thumbs up, basically providing it feedback. Now, let's say if we ask, uh, send to prompt and um, what should we ask? You know, let's say we can ask, explain this code to me and optimize this for performance. Now, remember, I'm not using the optimize uh, command or the optimize option with Q. I'm basically typing it over here. So whatever we did with right-click explain and right-click optimize, I'm basically telling it to do now. Now, let's see what it does. Okay. So hit enter. So this is my command right here. Is generating an answer. Certainly, let's break this code. Discuss its optimization. This is an explanation. So it's first is giving me an explanation. Okay. Then optimization for performance. Use as a lambda function. Okay. For repeated use of the same argument, you could create a partial function. So it's giving me multiple options. If working with large arrays, use NumPy would be more efficient. This would be much faster for large scale operations on arrays or matrices. It's important to note that for such simple operation, these optimizations would only make noticeable differences in extreme cases, that is millions of operations. In most practical scenarios, the original implementation is perfectly fine and arguably more readable. So it's, it's, it's smart, okay? It's basically telling you that, yes, I know that you're telling me to optimize this and I gave you multiple options, but it's also telling you that you don't need to over-engineer it. And all of these suggestions would only make sense if you have millions of calls. Otherwise, whatever you have right now is good enough, is perfectly fine, and is actually more readable and maintainable as well. So it's basically telling you that. Okay. So it is already well optimized for its purpose. There you go. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. So this is our step six. So we've completed all the steps for this particular lab. Guys, do use these commands, okay? Now, my intention behind this lab was to show all of these commands to you. But in your real life project, like go ahead and use these commands and see if it helps you. The more you work with it, the more you will know that how it behaves. And remember the model is self-learning, so, and remembers the context as well. So the more you work with it, the better it'll get. And let me know what your experience is, right? So this is it from me guys today. Thank you for watching this video. If this is helpful, do hit the like button. And if you are new to my channel, do subscribe to my channel and leave your comment. So thank you very much. And I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.